Greetings today in the name of Jesus Christ, our wonderful Lord and Savior. Good to see you here in the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church today. We appreciate your presence. You that's listening out in the radio listen audience, we most certainly appreciate you tuning in to the Northside Baptist Church Hour that's coming to you live right from the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church here in Athens, Georgia. Now, this is Preacher Edward speaking. I'm sure the hour coming up will be an inspiration to you. Take your Bible today and turn to Revelation chapter 20. Now, the message and the singing and also the music, of course, is on cassette tape 299. Tape number 299. I'll be glad to send you a list of our cassette tape. We have almost 300 listed. You can select the ones you desire. We have messages on prophecy, on great doctrines in the Bible, and various other things you need to be concerned about as a Christian. So write in and request the list. We'll be glad to send it to you. These tape are $3 each, and of course the gift is used to help defray our radio expense. And then why don't you write in and get a brochure on a proposed Holy Land tour? I've had some people say, Preacher Edwards, one of these marches we used to go and march to the holy land one of these years i'm going with you to the holy land well you may wait too late i don't know when i'm going to discontinue these tours but we do have a tour in the making for march of next year but now is the time to get your name on the list we plan to go to israel we plan to go to england and it's a wonderful wonderful tour and one, you'd always be glad that you went and got in on. So I hope that you'll write to me today. Call me, come to see me. Be glad to talk with you about it. My mailing address is Virgil Edwards, P.O. Box 501, Athens, Georgia. 30603 is the zip code number. This past Friday night, along with some of the flock, I was up in uh, North Georgia and uh, up there at that fish camp and uh, I tell you I really enjoyed it meeting some friends up there and so uh, it's up near Lula Georgia right near highway uh, number 52 and the owner of the fish camp is a great man brother Hugh Walden a great Christian and uh, he mentioned the fact to some of the people there the places as I usually have a large crowd because where you have a camp like that, I'll tell you, you have a, a large crowd as a general rule. And he mentioned the fact that I was in the building and a number of people came up from Helen. They are the home, of course, in Helen, Georgia. And they said, Preach Edwards, we want you to know that we listen to your broadcast every day and appreciate it so very much. And so it's always always makes you feel good to meet people that listen to the broadcast and always good to be up there with Brother Hugh Walden and his great place of business where they have such a great and wonderful fish camp. It's an old schoolhouse building. And I'll tell you, I've never seen a greater one in regard to a fish camp than that one. And so... I appreciate our listeners from the area and appreciate our brother Hugh Walden, that great man. He loves God, great gentleman, always extends to us a warm welcome when we go. All right, Revelation chapter 20. I want you to turn there. I was reading the other day about this preacher had a young man to speak for him and a very dignified man. His wife came walking in and the preacher said that's Dr. Jones said you might recognize it, great doctor in this area. And the young preacher got up and he said, we glad to have Dr. Jones. He's a great doctor. He's visited a lot of sick people, been in a lot of homes, sat by their bedside. And of course, he's loved by all the people, such a great doctor. Said, in fact, he delivered me when I was born. And he also delivered my little brother and sister, the preacher pulled his coattail and said, you idiot, said, that man's a veterinarian. <laughs> All right. Revelation chapter 20, beginning with verse 
11. I'm going to speak today on the great white throne judgment. And I saw a great white throne of him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away. There was found no place for them. And I saw the dead small and great stand before God. And the books open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell lived up the dead which were in them. They were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Now we have many judgments mentioned in the Bible. In fact, I have a message on the seven judgments we find in the Word of God. Today I want to speak about the great white throne judgment. That's coming a judgment known as the great white throne judgment at the time when God will judge the wicked, the Bible tells us. Now we're living in a, in a day in perilous times when things are happening that you'd hardly believe. You know, you've heard much about the Supreme Court in the past few weeks and how that they're trying to keep this man being placed on the Supreme Court bench, this fellow boy. And he's the very man that we need there. If there's ever a time whenever we needed a man of his caliber, it's right now. The liberal Earl Warren Supreme Court it's caused untold damage in this nation and turned the tide of the evil in this nation and it'll take a long time for it to completely heal and our president has been pushing in that direction that he will heal some of the evil done by the Earl Warren Court. Uh, president Eisenhower, when he was alive, said the greatest mistake he ever made while he was in office is when he appointed Earl Warren to Supreme Court Beach. Now, our president's been trying to cure that situation, but we've gotten to the place today where a man that's well qualified, great principles and whatnot means nothing anymore to the politicians. It's got to be a political football. And the Democrats and mainly the liberals are pushing to keep this man off the Supreme Court bench, and it looks like they're going to do it, which would be a great victory for evil, and for worsening of the situation in this nation because that man is well qualified and one of the best that you could place on the beach at this particular time. It grieves my heart and grieves the hearts of people that believe the Bible and the conservatives and those that believe in law and order to see that you can't get a man of his caliber on the Supreme Court because you have so many of these uh, politicians that you, you scare them half to death whenever some of the minority groups speak up and say we are against that man and that scares the senator half to death because he's afraid of that block vote and he's not willing to place a man on the beach that ought to be there because he's afraid of a little block vote out there that they'll vote against him and he won't be elected next time and that's sad Back years ago when Senator Dick Russell and other great senators went to Washington, they voted on conviction. They had great principles. They were men of character. And they voted what the nation needed in those days. Beloved, they didn't follow the leadership of a man that would drown a young girl that he took off when he ought to have been at home with his wife and youngins and care off and get her drowned and a bunch of other crooks that sit there and oppose a man that ought to be on the Supreme Court bench. Uh, the people didn't follow a man like that in, in days gone by, in the days of Dick Russell. They followed men of principle, men that had conviction, men that believed in the welfare of the nation, men that believed in law and order. That day is gone. It's pitiful. It's sad. And that's what we're facing today, and it's going to get worse. Now, I'm not a pessimist, I'm a truthist. It's going to get worse and worse. Now, I appreciate our president trying to set the thing in order and do something about it and try to curb the abortions in the land today. That's one reason 
They didn't want this man on the Supreme Court bench because he's against abortions. We're putting to death one million and a half unborn babies in America every year. We're putting to death more people, more babies in one year than it's been killed, soldiers have been killed in all the wars that this nation has fought from the very beginning of this nation. Now let that seek in. What are you saying, Preach Edwards? I'm saying we're murdering more babies every year than there have been soldiers killed in every war that this nation has been fought. The most dangerous place today is not riding in an automobile. It's not falling out the door of the window. It's not some kind of disease. The most dangerous place today for an infant is in his mother's womb. Now you better let that sink in. You think God Almighty is going to put up with that forever? No, no. The other day when an earthquake came out in California, someone almost spoke the truth. They said, oh, Mother Earth is beginning to speak. Now this world is rocking in sin. The Bible said there'd be more earthquakes and greater earthquakes. And you can stretch a canopy over a Los Angeles, California, and you just about have another Sodom and Gomorrah. Why do we have the AIDS? Why do we have these things happening? God is getting tired of some things that's happening in this nation. And then we're trying to get something done about it. And these liberals and infidels, Bible haters and sin lovers and crime lovers are opposing all the good and evil that we try, good, good rather, that we're trying to get done in this nation and keep the evil continuing on. Now that's not my message. Well, you say preach Edwards, I don't like it. I don't care if you don't like it. God didn't call me to preach what people like. God called me to preach the truth and to tell the truth and warn the people whether they like it or not. Now I'm speaking on one of the great judgments that you're going to face if you die without God. There's seven in the Bible. I won't mention but maybe two or three of them, but mainly the last one. Now there's a judgment of the Christian you find in the Word of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 10. There's a judgment of angels you find in Jude verse 6. There's a judgment of nations you find in Matthew chapter 25 verses 31 to 46. But I want to speak about the great white throne judgment. According to the Bible, that's coming a judgment at the end of the millennium when all sinners will come out of hell and stand before God to be judged. Now we have a lot of injustice today in many of our court courts because we have a lot of people today that's committing crime and getting by with it without any punishment. We have what they call a revolving door today for our criminals. You let them in one door, they come out the other. And they're let out of prison in a short period of time to go on and commit more crime. Now you have some people today in prison that ought to be out. Now that's the truth, you know that. But you have many people out of prison today that should be in prison. There used to be a time whenever they put the, prison, the criminals behind bars. But who's behind bars today? You. You're behind bars. You got your windows barred up, some of you. Your doors. You locked your doors. I've often said many times if we had three locks on our door, my wife would lock all three of them. Keep me standing out in the cold till she got them unlocked every time we went in. Well, that's all right. I'm not fussing about that. There's a time when you need to do something like that. It's going to get worse. And you lock your doors, you put in burglar alarms, and you stay behind the alarms and locked doors and barred windows and barred doors when there used to be a time the criminal was behind bars, but they'll put you behind the bars now. Now, beloved, that's coming a time when you're going to have to really protect yourself. And if you don't protect yourself, our criminal justice system today is not going to help you very, very much because we've come to the place whenever uh, many crooked lawyers know exactly who to put on the jury. They know who they can sway and they know who they can put on there to keep a person out of the electric chair. They know exactly who to put on there and get the criminal turned loose. And that's sad. It's going to get worse. We need some men with character today and some politicians They'll get something done in this respect. 
Now we have too many strength pullings today. Too many people that can walk in and, and uh, before the judge and the jury and the lawyer and uh, influence the, the, the jury or the, the judge and the lawyer to turn a criminal loose when he ought to be put in prison. Now you know that's so. Sometimes you get tired hearing that, but it's the truth and getting worse. I'm concerned about you and what's going to happen to you as the criminals become worse and continue to increase in this great land. But that's coming a time of judgment. A man may be go, go before a judge today and get out without a sentence. He may get a lawyer that can get him out of the crime he's committed. But that's coming a time when he's going to stand before a judge that you can't bribe. Now that judge is the Lord Jesus Christ. Now don't misunderstand me. We have some great lawyers and we have some great judges. Now I thank God for them. But you have some so crooked they have to screw their britches on when they get up every morning. You could throw them in a barrel of fish hooks and they wiggle out and never get scratched. But you have some that are honest and upright and are not going to do wrong or to try to misjudge or try to or maybe place a man in prison or let him go when he does deserve it. You have some honest people today in that field, and I'm glad. But that's coming a time of judgment, and that is the close of the millennial reign of Christ. Now, just in case you don't know what I mean by the millennial reign of Christ, the word millennium is a Latin word meaning a thousand years. That's coming back a man known as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. That man is none other than the man that crucified 2,000 years ago. That man is none other than Jesus Christ. He came the first time as the Savior. He's coming the next time as the judge and ruler on this earth to rule with a rod of iron on this earth. He'll be back at the close of the tribulation period is plant his feet on the Mount of Olives, cross over the Kidron Valley, enter in the Eastern Gate, and move into Jerusalem and set up his kingdom for a thousand year period of time. During that thousand year period of time, he'll lift the curse from the earth at the beginning thereof, and you're going to have a wonderful period of time, the great utopia, that'll take place during that thousand year period of time when we'll be with Jesus yonder in Jerusalem as his bride. And God will deal with the earthly people, mainly the Jews, during the millennium. And so that time is coming. At the end of that great millennium, God will test humanity. God will let the devil loose for a short period of time, testing humanity to see if they'll uh, believe on him, trust him, or whether they'll turn and follow Satan. The devil will be let out of the lake of fire, the bottomless pit. He's coming out. And, of course, he'll be on the earth for a short period of time. And he'll gather the people against Jesus Christ at the end of the millennium. And when he does, God's going to destroy the people, take the devil, and place him in the lake of fire where he'll remain forever. Now when God does that, God is going to call out of the graves all the wicked people that's ever died without God, even from wicked Cain right on until that particular time. Every sinner, every person that's ever died in his sins without Jesus Christ is coming out of the grave and will stand before God. And, and that great throne is known as the great white throne. It's a judgment time. And Jesus Christ is the one that will sit on that throne. The Bible says in John chapter 5 and verse 22, for the Father judges no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. The Bible says in Romans chapter 2 and verse 16, In the day when God will judge the secret of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. And so God will call the dead out to judge them. God will not judge the dead, the sinners, to find out whether they're saved or lost. They determine that before they die. They'll stand before God as wicked sinners died without Jesus Christ and they'll be judged and then they'll be cast into the lake of fire. The guilty shall be judged. Revelation chapter 20 verse 12. I saw the dead small and great stand before God and the books were open. Another book was open which is the book of life and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works 
What are you saying, Preach Edwards? Right here is something you need to listen to this Baptist preacher say. Now listen to me. Every evil thing, every sin you've ever committed from the time you come into this world and you stand at the judgment, great white throne judgment of God is going to be revealed. That's a great white throne judgment. Every one of them. Every sin you commit from time you're born until you die, if you die a sinner, you're going to face that sin at the great white throne judgment of God. You need to realize that. Now you say, preacher, I, I'd hate to have to face that. Well, there's one thing that can be done that you won't have to face those sins. And this is the only way you'll escape facing those sins. When you come to know Jesus Christ as your own personal Savior, God will blot out every sin you've ever committed from the time you were born to the moment you were born the second time. Now listen to me. I was born the second time at the age of 21. Every sin I ever committed from the time I was born out here in Madison County in a little country home, born there many years ago, every sin, see I was conceived in sin and born in iniquity, conceived in iniquity and born in sin, and every sin I ever committed from the time I came into this world until I got saved, went under the blood. Every one of them went under the blood. God blotted all of my sins out. And when God saved me at the age of 21, yonder in the city of Greenville, South Carolina, God saw my record as clean as could be because it had been cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. God saw my record, no spot against it, no sin held against me. Not one thing did God hold against me from the time I was born till I was saved, although I was a great sinner like you were when you got saved. Now, God blots out your past sins the moment you're saved. Now, are you listening? If you don't get saved, now just, just surmise that I'd have uh, gone on in my sin and lived to be 50 years old and then died without God. What would happen? I would face every sin I'd ever committed from the time I was born until I was 50 years old when I died without God. Are you listening? That's exactly what every sinner is going to do. He's going to face his record from the time he was born until the minute he died. And all the evil influence he's left behind, they'll pile up on his record after he's gone. You listen to me. The only way you get around that is to come to know God. Now you, you listen to that because that's very important. Now when those sinners come out of that grave and not one sinner will come out of that grave until the end of the millennium. All the saints of God will come out at the rapture. All that's a member of the body of Christ will come out at the rapture. Now you keep that in mind. No sinner will come out of that grave at the rapture. Only those they're in the body of Christ. Only the saved people that come out at the rapture that's been born again, washed in the blood of Christ. Now, are you listening? That sinner is going to remain in the grave until the end of the millennium. At the same time, while his body is in the grave, his soul is down in the heart of this earth in a place called hell. That's why sinners are today down in hell waiting until the end of the millennium. And then at the end of that millennium, God is going to call all the bodies of all the sinners back into existence, and all their souls will go back into their bodies. And they'll stand before God at the great white throne judgment. And there they'll be judged. Or you say, now preach Edwards, if they're already lost, why would they be judged? That's important. See, a lot of people have the idea that when they stand before God in the judgment, that God's going to weigh their good against their bad. And if the good outweighs the bad, then uh, God will let them into heaven. If the bad outweighs the good, they go to hell. Nothing's going to be further from the truth than that. When you stand before God as a lost sinner, God is not going to judge you as to whether or not you get into heaven or no. And remember this, there's no such thing as purgatory. That's a lie of the devil. 
No such thing as purgatory. When you die without Jesus Christ, you either go to heaven or hell immediately. Now you keep that in mind. And so that sinner stands before God. Now you may say, Preach Edwards, or why is he judged? Well, let me ask you a question. Why does God judge that Christian at the judgment seat after the rapture? Why? He's already saved. Why does God judge him? Now, beloved, God judges him. It's quite obvious that God might determine the degree of reward that he'll give to that Christian at the judgment seat of Christ. See, as a Christian, you're going to face your record from the time you were saved until you die of the rapture, and God will reward you according to the record that you have as a Christian on this earth. Now, if God does that for the Christian, and that's determined the degree of reward, then why does God judge the sinner? God judges that sinner to determine the degree of punishment in hell. Now you listen to me. There is a degree of punishment. A degree of punishment for that wicked man, a woman that dies without God. It depends upon the weakness upon the earth. That doesn't phase the time element. The time is forever, but it does fade the degree, the, fade the degree of punishment, uh, the, the Bible tells us, of punishment upon the earth. And that you need to keep in mind. That's why the judgment. Why it would be a mockery. There'd be no sense of a judgment if God didn't have a reason for it. And the reason for it is God is going to determine that degree of punishment for that sinner at the great white throne judgment. Now let's reason just briefly. There was a man by the name of Adolf Hitler. You've heard his name. You know about him. That man is responsible for more than 40 million people being put to death. That man is responsible for some 6 million Jews being tortured and put to death. That man no doubt died and went to hell and no doubt is in hell today. Very wicked man. Here's another person, let's say a good moral mother. She lived a good clean life. She was good to her husband, good to her children. Maybe went to church occasionally, done a lot of good deeds, kind to people, wouldn't harm a hair on your head, give the, the dress off her body to somebody that needed. Good mother, precious mother, but she never got saved. What happens to that mother? When she dies, she goes to hell. And she'll come out at the great white throne judgment and she'll stand before God to be judged along with old Adolf Hitler, Joe Stalin, and all of that wicked crowd and the ungodly people that's dying today that are so wicked. Do you think God is going to punish that mother with the same degree of punishment that he's going to punish Adolf Hitler, Joe Stalin, and all that wicked crowd? Do you think they're going to get the same degree of punishment? No, sir. No, sir. She will not be punished with the same degree of punishment that the wicked are. Oh, somebody said now, Preacher Edwards, if I'm going to hell... I might as well go ahead, commit all the sins, go live it up, have a good time, because I'm going to hell anyway. You better think twice. You better think twice. God is putting that on your record. Every time you get drunk, every time you cuss, every time you gamble, every time you committed a sin, every time you dishonored your parents, every time you stole, every time you did wrong, God puts that on your record book. It's right there. You're going to face it if you die without God. God will have your record. Now the Bible says in Job chapter 16 verse 19, Also now behold my witness is in heaven and my record is on high. It does make a difference how you live, whether you're saved or lost. Because you're going to be judged according to your record to, degree your, your degree of, to determine your degree of punishment. In Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 14, For God shall bring every work into judgment with great secret things, whether it be good or whether it be a bad or be evil. The Bible said there'd be some books open at the great white throne. In Revelation chapter 20 and verse 12, I saw the dead small and great stand before God, and the books were open. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead was judged out of those things which are written in the books according to their works. Let that sink in. God said that sinner will be judged out of the book, the record book, 
according to his works. That's the Bible. You find that in Revelation chapter 20 verse 12. It does make a difference as to what kind of life you live upon the earth. Whether you save the lost. It makes a difference when it comes to that judgment. You must keep that in mind. In John chapter 20 verse 48. He that rejected me and received not my words hath one that judges him. The word that I have spoken the same shall judge him in that day. So there's a judgment day of coming. For those who reject Jesus Christ, for evil works, those who speak against God, those that work against God, the Bible tells us that time is coming. And the Word of God says in Revelation chapter 20 verse 15, And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. A person may stand at the great white throne judgment. They may not have a, a real corrupt and bad wreck in a way of committing evil like the good moral mother I talked about. But that the, the book of life is going to be checked and her name is not there in the lake of fire she goes as well as the other weekend. Revelation chapter 21 verse 8 said, But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all lies shall have their part in the lake which burnt the fire and brimstone, which is the second death. There's a judgment waiting for every sinner at the great white throne. That'll be a terrible time for those that died without God. I'm glad that saved people won't have to go there. If you are not saved today and you die without God, you'll be resurrected at the end of the millennium and you'll go there to be judged and sent to the lake of fire. The only way you can clear your record is to come know Jesus Christ as your Savior. Many years ago when this trying to settle the old west, there was a great convoy of Wagons going out west, covered wagons loaded down with families, hundreds of them moving out west, trying to settle the west and, and maybe to find gold or whatnot. And they were moving along. They had a rough time. And uh, there's bad weather. And, and they suffered very much, but they kept moving on toward the west. Finally, when they almost reached their destination, they looked and saw, behold, a great fire coming. Like some of these fires you've read about out in California in the past few weeks. The wind was blowing very strongly and blowing the fire toward them. And there's a great gorge on one side. They couldn't go down there. They couldn't go to the right. They just couldn't get out of the way of that fire. And some began to panic. They just knew that it's going to be burned up. In a few moments, the leader of the group came riding back on his horse. He went back to the back of the wagons. He said, men began to set a fire back here. And they started setting fire to the back of those wagons. And the wind kept burning, carrying that fire away from the wagons. And on and on the fire went. And then um, after they burned space enough, you know what they did? They backed their wagons. They turned their wagons, the horses, and the families back into that burn area. So when the fire coming toward them reached the ground, had already been burned over, then the fire would die out. And they were saved. One little girl said to the leader, said, Sir, are we going to be burned up? Are we saved? And he said, Yes, honey, we are saved because this ground has already been burned over. You've got nothing to worry about. That's exactly what happened on the cross. God's fire, God's wrath fell on Jesus Christ. He suffered for your sins. He suffered for my sins. He paid the sin debt. And if you know him or come to know him as your Savior, you will not have to face God's wrath and judgment at the great white throne because it's already been burned over. Jesus paid the debt at Calvary. He paid the sin debt for you. And God's wrath fell on him in your place and in my place that we won't have to go to hell and we won't have to go to the lake of fire. Yes, if you are not saved, you may be one in the number that stand at the great white throne judgment and send us to the lake of fire. And you can get saved and take care of that situation. And if you are saved, you ought to be glad you're saved and praise God for that. Let's stand to our feet. Father in heaven, I pray that you'll take the message and use it. Speak to many hearts, our Father. Lord, no doubt in the radio listen audience, there are sinners out there. Laws headed toward the great white throne judgment. Oh God, I pray. I pray, dear Father that somebody might repent right now and get saved. Speak to the people in this audience. If there's somebody here unsaved, dear Lord, I pray, my God, that they won't rest 
until they come to know the dear Savior. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, while Debbie plays softly on the organ, listen to me. If you're in this building and you're not saved, you ought to run to God. You ought to fall on your face before God and ask God to save you as a lost sinner. You may be one in that number headed for the great white throne. If you're backslidden on God, you need to come back. If you don't have a church home, maybe you want to join the north side. For any other reason you want to come, you may do so. While we wait, while Debbie plays, would you come? We're right here to help you. Tony's here to help you. I'll be here to help you. Would you come while we wait?